Hey, hi everyone, and welcome again to Mansuri Pokor F. So for this succeeding videos, I will discuss the solutions to system of linear equations using iterative methods. So for in the learning outcomes, we have the following. So we want to demonstrate the step-by-step -step process of solving a system of linear equations using indirect, or in other words, uh, iterative methods. And then uh, we want to also verify the linear equations are guaranteed to converge based on its diagonal dominance. And then we want to compare the direct and iterative methods. So the outline of this, we have three general methods. No, actually, they are just variations of one iterative method and you will see later. So we have uh, Gauss-Jacobi, Gauss-Seidel, and the successive relaxation. Okay, now, so before we dive in into the methods of solving uh, uh, system of linear equations using uh, direct methods, okay, uh, sorry, indirect methods, we want to first figure out the diagonal dominance. So, a sufficient condition for solving uh, system of linear equations using iterative methods, it should be diagonally dominant. Again, to guarantee a solution using the iterative method, it should be diagonally dominant. Although it is not uh, required, but uh, it will guarantee the solution if it is diagonally dominant. So it might still have, uh, or it might con it might still converge the solution if it, even if it is not uh, diagonally dominant. No. But again, diagonally dominant uh, is the, the sufficient condition. So how do we figure out or how do we find if a given matrix is diagonally dominant? So the uh, diagonally dominance, diagonal dominance should have this uh this equation. No? So what does this mean? So basically the diagonals, no, so notated by A sub I I, so meaning it has the same index for row and column. So the absolute value of this diagonal should be greater than or equal to the sum of all the, the elements of that row, you know, compared to the sum of the, the absolute value of the elements of that row. So we will have an example later, don't worry. And that's it. Also, that is the diagonal dominance. So the diagonal should have the highest absolute value compared to the sum of, uh, of the other elements in that row. Okay? So uh, there are different uh ways to identify how fast will be the convergence of our solution using iterative methods and uh there are these things that affect the the, the convergence of our iterative of our solution using this iterative method so the first one is diagonal dominance no? so if your uh your 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 matrix is diagonally dominant then it will converge faster compared if it is not diagonally dominant and then it also affects the initial solution. No? So if your solution is far away from the exact one, so it will be longer compared to when your, your initial solution is already close enough to the, to the exact. So the algorithm can also affect the convergence. So actually, Gauss-Seidel is twice as fast as uh, Jacobi, or uh, twice, uh, yes, twice as fast as Jacobi. And then also the convergence criterion specified. So if you want to all only have an error of, let's say, 10%, it will be much faster compared if, if we want to, let's say, uh, have a stopping criterion of 0.01%. And another thing then, not to add to this number four, so if you want our decimal places to be correct in this number, and now we can also specify that. And the more digits you want your solution to be correct, we'll need more uh, iterations, you know, to guarantee that it is the, 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 or it will suggest that it will be the exact solution. Okay. So let's begin with the first iterative method, no? So the simplest one is the Jacobi, no? So the Gauss-Jacobi method, is uh, the simplest inter iterative method for solving system of linear equations. So we know that our uh, system of linear equation is composed 
of the coefficient matrix, the solution vector, and the constant co uh, constant vector, no? So how do we de uh, determine whether uh, or what is the method using uh, the Jacobi method? So take note of this notation for for uh, the the coefficient matrix, no? So I basically means the row. J is the column. Ano? So comparing this to the other, ano, no, other, uh, other notation that we use, we have I as our current row, we have J as our reference row, but for now, I means the row, J means the column. Okay? So let's try solving the, uh, or, or let's formulate a solution for solving, for example, a 3 by 3 uh system of linear equations so meaning it has three unknowns and three equations so for solving that it will be this one and also what does this mean or how did we come up with this so given your system of linear equation also i'll just take here that let's say we have a11 x1 plus a12 x2 plus a13 x3 is equal to b1 Ano? So, this is the notation for the system of linear equations. So, we have first row, first column, first row, second column, first row, third column. No? So, that is the notation. And then, the second equation will be this. Uh, okay. And then, the third, uh, sorry, the third, no? The third term of the second equation. And then, for the third equation, we have this. Uh, plus a32 x2 plus a33 x3 is equal to b3. Okay, so uh, for the solution vector that uh, we want to, to derive, we can see, now we can solve actually the x1 using the first equation. So using the first equation, we can uh, manipulate this no, by transposing these two terms to the other side. So this will be b1 minus a12 x2 minus a13 x3 and then this will be equal to a11 x1 right so dividing this by a11 we can see that the solution for x1 is this over a11 so what did we do here so this is similar to what we are doing in the fixed point iteration no? so in the fixed point iteration scheme in the solution to single nonlinear system, oh, sorry, single, single nonlinear equation, we can manipulate the equation in a way that we have x here and the function of x here to the other side. Okay, so this is how we found no, this first equation and we can do this as well for the second and third equation. So what does this notation mean, yung k, no, k and k minus 1? So the k means here, the k means the what? It could have a different meaning no, depending on your perspective. So I'll just put here k is the present approximation and k minus 1 is the previous approximation. Okay? So the to find the present approximation x of 1k, you will need to input here the previous approximation of x2 and the previous approximation of x3. And usually, no, usually lang naman, no, if, it, if it is not specified, uh, ito pala na k and k1. If it is not specified, you, we usually use an initial condition of zeros. Depending on how many uh, zeros we need. no. Depending on the number of equations and unknowns. You know? Usually, we use, use zeros as initial conditions. But we can also use different initial, uh, not, not initial conditions, but initial guesses. No? So again, let's uh, see the algorithm in line. No? So, the, so the, the first step here is to find the initial guess. Usually, it is all x is equal to 0. Then we can calculate the new value of x using the old one, or using the formula of the gauss jacobi So we have x is equal to blank, x equal to 2, x equal to uh, x2 is equal to blank. Okay, so for the present approximation. And then... For the criterion, no, we have to specify a criterion depending on uh, what what accuracy we need. No? 
And uh, if it is not specified, uh, we will have a different approach later. You know? So we want to compare each of the, so it, it could be you know, no absolute error or relative error. So we will still use the relative error no, for this one. Okay, so uh, if if the stopping criterion is met for all, no, for all for to dapat to for all, for all the access, then it will stop, and then the the final value of the x will be our approximate solution. So again, let's have an example here using the Gauss-Jacobi method. So find the solution set uh, of the system using the Gauss-Jacobi method. Use the initial guess of x sub zero, so zero zero zero. So this is the given uh, link, uh, set, uh, or sorry, a system of linear equation. How do we solve for x1, x2, x3? Okay, so another note we should use for the small places for our calculation. So before we solve this, using iterative methods, again, we have to check for diagonal dominance. Uh, diagonal dominance. So we have to check whether this diagonal is greater than the sum of each of its rows. You know? So let's delete this again. So basically for the first row, so the coefficient of x1 is 1. So 1 should be greater than or equal to the absolute value of the sums of the coefficients here. So as we can see, this is not diagonally dominant. We can check for this one as well. So 1 is greater than or equal to uh, we have uh, 3, so we have absolute value of 3 plus the absolute value, but we forgot absolute value pala, no? and then the absolute value of negative 1. So this is not correct 2 since this will be equal to positive 2. So 2 is not greater than, or sorry, so 2 is not less than uh, 1. Ano? So it is not diagonally dominant. And then for the last uh, equation, so 5 or the absolute value of 5 should be greater than or equal to the sum of this. We have 1 and then plus negative 1. So this obeys the diagonal dominance, although this one does not. So we can try exchanging the rows. So one way to do this is we can exchange the rows here. So exchanging these rows will, will possibly make this diagonal dominant. So we have 3x1 plus x2 minus x3 is equal to 2. So change everything now in this uh, row. And then swap this with the first row. So we have x1 plus 4x2 plus x3 is equal to 12. And then we have x1 minus x2 plus 5x3 is equal to 14. So as we can see here, so check for uh, the diagonal dominance again. So the absolute value of 3 is greater than or equal to. So we have here 1 and, posit, uh, and uh, plus negative 1. So the absolute value of 1 is 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So this is equal to 2, therefore it is less than, no? or, or, or 3 is, is greater than 2. And then for this one, we can check for this one as well. So is this greater than or equal to 1 and 1? So 4 is greater than 2, right? So this is also diagonal dominant. And uh, again, this is already diagonal dominant, so we can just write this again. Okay, so we have 1 and negative 1. So this diagonal dominance since 5 is greater than 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, so we can continue now solving this using the Gauss-Jacobi method. So the first thing you should do is to set up your iteration function. So what is the iteration function? We will solve for x1 here. Okay, so we will solve for x1 here. So we have uh, x1 is equal to, so we can transpose this to the other side. We have x2. Oh, sorry, this should be 2 minus, so this will become negative, so x2, this will become positive, and then all over, the coefficient is 3. Okay, so this is our iteration function. So this is the uh, the present uh, it, uh, approximation, and this should be the previous approximation. So we should utilize this, this uh, notation, and then for x2, we have this, so x2 is equal to, so for this one, ano, we have 12, and then transpose this to the other side. So we have negative x1, negative x3. Okay, and then divide this by 4. Okay, so this is the present approximation. This should be the previous approximation. 
for x3, same thing. So we have this. Okay, so we have 14 on the right-hand side. And then transpose this uh, x1 and uh, minus x2. So this will be minus x1 plus x2. And then all over 5. So again, this is the present approximation, the previous, the previous approximation. Okay. So how do we form our iterator? So the iterator here will be, we can use here a k, or it depends on you, know, you can use n or k here. So I'll just use k here since I use k in the formulation. So k means the iteration, no? or iteration. Okay, and then uh, we have also the, uh, we have the solution for x1, the solution for x2, and the solution for x3. So the, the stopping criterion is not specified, so we will just leave the stopping criterion for now. And let's just do this anyways now. So it tells us that it should be correct up to four decimal places. So let's see what we can do. So this will be a long one, guys. No? So for the k is equal to zero, so the initial, uh, actually the k is equal to one. No? So the first iteration, uh, I think it should be k plus one no? uh, or k minus one. Anyways, so k k uh when when uh when k is equal to zero, it should be negative one, right? Anyways, so when uh the first the first uh solution set is zero, or the first approximation is zero, so we should use zero. So let's use our calculators. So let's use this, and let's solve this system using the first equation no, for x one. So we have zero 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 pala no. We have to specify here zero zero zero. We're going to write this down. Okay. So for the first iteration, k is equal to one. So we have here uh two minus, I guess uh we can write x one, I guess I will write here uh x one is a, x two is b, x three is c. Just to see, just to have uh, annotation here now. So 2 minus P e minus C over 3 for the first calculation. So we have calc and then B. So X2 is initially 2. So substitute this. Ano? So we have 0 and then 0 as well here. So we substitute here. Uh, 0, 0. So 0 again. So the first, uh, but why do I have C? Okay, sorry. So calc, so B is zero, C is also zero, okay? So the first uh, solution is 0.667. Also to calculate for X1, we have 0.6667 for the first solution. And then for the second, uh, no, so second or the X2, we have 12, 12 minus X1, so alpha A for uh, X1. And then alpha C for X3 and then over 4. So calculate this. So the initial value of X1 is 0. So 0 here. And also we see the 0 here and 0 here. So we should input both zeros. 0, 0. Sorry. 0 and 0. So the answer is 3. So 3 is the first iteration value of X2. And then for X3. So another formula we have, we have 14 minus uh, A plus alpha B and then 5. So calculate, so 0 pa rin. so X1 and X2 are 0, so we will utilize here 0 and 0, no? So 0 and 0, so 0 and 0, no? So we have a solution of 2.8. Okay, so that is the first iteration. So for the second iteration, we will repeat it again. No, So we will just go back to the previous one. So we will use this 2 minus B minus C. So calculate this as B and C. And also I will just take this to, to avoid confusion. This is your A, this is your B, this is your C. And the current K here. So we have uh, B and C on our formula. So we have this as our values. So calculate and then B is equal to 3. C is equal to 2.8. So the next iteration is negative. Is that correct? Uh, why is that? Uh, okay. What? 
So 3 and 2.8, right? Why does it have a negative? Uh, I think I have it wrong. It should be positive, right? Should be positive, right? Oh, we, we have uh, an error here, no? So yeah, uh, anyways, this should be positive pala, no? So anyways, zero lang naman siya kanina. So okay lang. Okay, so at this time, we have 0.6 as our first value, okay? And then for x2, so we have again this formula. So 12 minus, so let's find this again. So 12 minus a minus c, so calculate here. So A and C, we want to use this and this one. So that will be the, so you will see a pattern here. And I'll just do this faster enough. So we have a 0.6667 and 2.8. So we have 2.133, 2.1333. For X3, so I'll go back again to your history. And then substitute A and B. So we have 0 0.667, 667, and then 3. Oh, sorry. So the answer is 3.26, 3 3.26, 6, and 7. And then do this again. So yeah, let's try doing this again and again. Okay, it will be exhaustive. So I won't, I won't top anymore, no? So negative B, so help. So B is 2.133, and then we have 3.2667. So the answer is 1.0445, and then for X2, okay, use the 12, no? So 12, and then... Uh, A is 0.6, so the previous is 0.6, and then 3.2667. So we have 2.033, 2.0333. Then next one for the third. So X3, we have 14 minus A plus B over 5. So A is 0.6, B is 2.1333, yeah. So we have 3.1067, 1067, and then 4, okay, calculate this again. So we have 1, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, not that 1, we have to use the 2. So 2 minus B plus C, so calculate this. So B is 2.0333, and then C here is 3.1067. Yeah, so we have 1.02, 1.0245. Next one, so uh, 12 and then 1.0445. And then C is uh, 3.1067. So 1.9622, 1.9622. Repeat this again. So we have uh, for 14. Uh, so calculate, so A is 1.0, okay, it is already input pala, no? and then 2.033, uh, so we have 2.9978, so we have 2.9978, okay, so fifth iteration, so calc, we have, uh, sorry, not that one, but uh, the, the 2 minus B plus C, so we have uh, B, B is 1.9622, and then C is 2.9978. So we have 1.0119. And then for uh, another one, so calc for X2, so A is 1.0245. And C is 2.9978. Yeah. So the answer is 1.9944. So let's check. Let's check. Okay. 1.9944. 1.9944. And then, uh, I, not this one, no. Huh? I, I utilize the different formula, right? So calc. Ah, I utilize the different formula. So I should input this to. X2 pala, no? 
x2 1.6 so 1.9944 oh it's going to diverge it seems diverging ano okay let's try the 14 so 14 okay calc so a is 1.0245 b is 1.9622 so the new iteration is 2.9 so it as you can see it is painfully slow to do this but as you can see we are approaching to a value and actually it is uh rather correct you know okay so uh a here for the next one sorry uh for the next one we will use again the two no? so for the six uh iteration uh asking for b so 1.9944 c here is 2.9 875. So 0.9977. 0 0.9977. Okay, let me just check again. Okay, for uh the next one we have the 12, no? So calc, so A and C 1.0119. And then C here is uh 2.9875. So we have 2.002, 2. 2.0002. And then uh, again, we have uh, x sub 3. So for x sub 3, sorry, not this one. x sub 3, we have the 14 formula. No? Ayan. So A, okay, A is already this. So B is already equal to this. So 2.9965, 2.9965. And then do this again. Okay, we will use the next page here, you know. So again, back to two. So we have uh, two point zero 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 two for B, and two point nine nine six five for C. So we have point nine nine eight eight nine nine eight eight. I will tell you, you know, when we light stop, no. So the next one, uh, we have 12, and uh, A here is 0 0.9977. C here is, okay, so we're already good. So 2.0015, 2.0015, and then 4, 14. Okay, we have already A and then B, okay, good. So we have 3.0005. So I'll just utilize the next page for the next one. So for the next one, uh, we have 2 minus B plus C. So calculate this again. So B here is 2.0015. C here is 3.0005. And then uh, the answer here is 0.99997. Okay. So the new iteration, we have the iteration counter. So K or iteration no is eight which is for x1 that will be 0 0.9997 okay and then for x2 okay for x2 we will solve the x2 so calculate this again uh sorry not this one uh but the 12 so calc a point nine 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 point nine nine eight eight uh, let's check this. Okay, so cut the 12. Sorry, cut so point nine nine eight eight, and then uh, C here is okay. We are good. We have 2.0002, 2.0002, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.
for 12. It feels painfully long, ano? So, A here, the new uh, value of A, so 0.9997, C is 3.005, so we have 2. Okay, so 2.000. And then for X3, so X3 we have, uh, so A is, okay, we are good with A. So B is good as well. So we have 3.0001. Okay, and then the 10 iteration, so we have, uh, uh, what do you call this? Sorry, not this one, but another formula. So, 2. So, calculate the x1 using b and c. So, 2, 2, exactly 2, and then 3.0001. So, the value is 1.000. Okay, and then for the next one, we have uh, the 12 formula. No? So, latest approximation is 1. The latest C is 3.001, so we have 2.000. And then for X sub 3, at this point, so for X sub 3, we have, uh, what do you call this? Right, right. 14, okay. So we have 1 and we have 2, so the answer is 3. Okay, so as you can see, it, it seems to converge in 1, 2, and 3, you know, as their uh, x, uh, x1, x2, and x3, respectively. So let's do this one more time, and let's see if there will be a difference. So we want our answer to be correct up to four decimal places. So if this doesn't change in the next iteration, then therefore, it is the solution. So let's calculate this. So for x sub 1, the input of x2 is 2. The input for C is 3, so it is still 1. Okay, and then for letter, uh, sorry, not letter, but uh, X sub 2, so input the value of A and C, so 1 and 3, so it is still 2. And then for, for 3, so calculate, so 1 and 2, so this will still be 3. So therefore, as you can see, if there is no changes here, then therefore it is correct. No, it is correct up to four decimal places. Therefore, the solution for x1, x2, and x3 is equal to 1, 2, and 3. Ano? Okay, so we utilized at 11 iterations. Okay, so this will be your solution set. So x uh, tilde will be we have 1, 2, and 3, and actually. This is also the exact no solution. Okay, so that will be all for this method. Uh, I will discuss docidal and uh, success successive uh, uh, relaxation for the next videos. So thank you guys for listening. Good luck.